Okay, it's Monday Night Live with Christine and GQ Prepper. How are you guys doing? Good. Good. <laughs> Our, you know, GQ Prepper is <laughs> our typical guest, but um, Christine is our special guest. And who do we have just dinged oh, in there? Oh, that's Wide, wide Blind just came in. Um, he is one of those evil Freemasons that's going to take over the world. He's probably muted right now, so he can't say anything. But anyway, Christine, I was we were talking earlier, and I was curious about your turnout. What was that? Was that a, a scheduled gal uh, rally? I start to say gallery rally, and or was it like a um, you know y'all put it together quickly because of some legislation? Or tell me what's going on there. It. It actually served a, a dual purpose. People were there for two different reasons. Um, it was some my sort of planned several weeks in advance, and some of the people were there for the C.J. Grisham, um, the the guy that was had his was arrested for rudely displaying his rifle, and um, so some people were protesting that, and other people were just protesting the police department in general. Because, first of all, there is no law that says you can't rudely display your long rifle in the state of Texas. So he was falsely arrested regardless. So was when was he arrested so before that, the rally? Was he was it like a week um, before the rally or Oh no, it was it has actually been several months. He's getting ready actually to go to trial if I understand right, but like I said that's a whole other story because I wasn't particularly there for him because I think the situ I think he could have de-escalated the situation, but regardless, the police department should have dropped the charges because they had no charges. Okay, so the rally was not just specifically for him; it was already planned, or did some, or did you all? That was in response to what happened to him. No. Why? It, it was in response to what the police department had done because he was like he's like the third person in this local area now that has been arrested unlawfully for carrying a weapon. Okay. Um. Well, was this the? Because uh, uh, I, I don't have all these straight now. Was this the guy that was doing like a little hiking trip with his son for like scouting? Was this this the same guy? Yes. Oh, I didn't put that together. Yes. Okay. I'm glad you asked yeah. that question because now I know who it is. Um. Now, okay. Yeah. That that's who it was. Well. Yeah. That looked like it could have gone either way. It's not very long. Was did the guy? Um. I in that case, I thought I don't know why some of these cases. I, sometimes I get the impression that. People are looking for a reaction, but you're why? Why was he? I forgot the circumstances. He was he was walking down the street, right, with his son or something. No, he, he was walking. It wasn't a city street. It was part of the city of Temple, but it was outside of town. Okay. And he was taking a ten mile walk with his son, and he was on a rural road. But I mean, it was a road nonetheless, and someone had called. And said he was rudely carrying a rifle. <laughs> rudely carrying it. So they said rudely carrying a rifle. And so, well, and like I said, I don't know what the laws are in other places, but here in Texas, I can take my long rifle anywhere I want. There is no law against it. Right. So you all, you the all fact can that he was walking carry. down the street with it, only long rifles. We, when it comes to handguns, we have to conceal and have a permit. But okay. you don't need a permit or to conceal a long rifle. Now, uh, my or question long... is, when I, when I viewed this, because, of course, state laws are different. In, my, in our state of Tennessee, uh, if we are approached by an officer, they do have the authority to disarm us while they're detaining us or questioning us. And of course, there's no problem there to return the the uh, firearm. 
Uh, is there a similar law there in Texas? Because that that was that was kind of the thing that was when I watched that video, and I was kind of wondering about because in Tennessee, what the officer would have done would have been completely within his rights and legal. But I didn't know if it See, was the same in, way in Texas. No, in te Texas, they can only disarm you. If you are doing something that leads them to believe you are a danger to yourself, them, or others. And he was just walking down the street, so. Okay. There was no reason to disarm him. They would have to have cause, basically. And that's why he kept asking them, is there a reason? And like I said, you know, I'm not, I'm not agreeing with the way he handled it because, like I said, in my classes, I tell people, no, they're not supposed to disarm you. But don't argue it at the fact at that point, unless you feel like your your life is in danger, because take it up afterwards, you know, and then you're in the right. But you know, like I said, I don't know. I I wasn't at the rally for him. I was at the rally because, like I said, there's been multiple times now recently where people have been arrested for charges that don't even exist. There is no such charge as rudely displaying your weapon. Hmm. How, how, I wonder. I was wondering, was he? Uh, I, mean, I mean, there's a lot of issues here. I mean, natu I don't encourage people to open carry. Uh, and I know you're going to have a problem with this, but because you're there's a different culture, you know, here in Texas, obviously. But you know, I mean, I was. I'm wondering what what his goal was, I'm not going to say his purpose or right, I'm going to say what was his goal for carrying, was he on a hunting trip or was he just, um, I mean, he had, did he have a purpose? I don't want to say purpose because you don't need a purpose. I'm going to get in trouble there. I'm just saying what was his goal? Uh, he actually did have a reason. If that's what I mean, like you said, he didn't need a reason, but he actually did have a reason because on the, I don't, I don't know how Tennessee is, but here in Texas, especially in this area, we have a lot of wild hogs, really big wild hogs. <laughs> and you get out on those rural roads, yeah. and it gets dangerous. And then, you know, so there's that. And, well, we got coyotes um, and bears. In the area, you know, <laughs> yeah, well, coyotes, I mean, we've got a lot of coyotes, too, but I'm not real afraid of the coyotes because, you know, they're more afraid of they're, you. They're but, shy. Yeah, they're very so, shy. Unless there's like a pack of ten of them, then they but get the kind of brave. <laughs> Tony. Exactly, exactly. But the hogs are very brave, so. Wildlife wow. and game just. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, wildlife and game just killed about fifty over here uh, past weekend. Oh yeah, they're open. I mean, you're allowed to shoot coyotes without any. Uh, uh, you know, they're open. They're open game, open season on yeah. uh, coyotes here in Tennessee My, because. Uh, I actually don't mind them. I, I don't. I wouldn't shoot one if I saw it. But um, I, I imagine in some places they're a real problem. You know. Oh, this was wild boar. Yeah. Oh, I thought you were talking about coyotes. No. Yeah. Hello, everybody. <laughs> hey, Wyden, how you doing? I was trying Hi. to get my gear straightened out. Sorry. Well, I know that there's uh, lots of places in Tennessee to hunt wild boar, and I know there's one place that has these humongous. Uh, what do they call them? The, they're probably the size of the ones you're talking about in Texas, but they're 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 bred there for for game hunting. You know, they, people pay to go hunt them there, and it's it's not too far wow. from me. I think it's only like uh, 50 miles from here. I think it's not Johnson City, but someplace like that, pretty close to Chattanooga. And you can go rent a cabin, and these things are five or six hundred pounds. You know. And, uh, yeah, we don't so, try to leave them here. <laughs> so, so yeah, I mean, if I was worried about that, I guess I would, you know, if I was on a ten mile hike with my son out in the wild boar territory, I probably would. Uh, I don't know. I, I, I've often carried. I can't say this publicly, I guess, but I've often carried because you're not supposed to <laughs> uh, conceal carry on camping trips. Um, you know, to protect against bears or whatever, but we don't really have that big of a problem. Uh, I mean, most of the, even the bears, black bears, are, will, are shy unless they've got a problem, you know. Um, 
Yeah. Well, so, the, the, like I said, the, the boar, the hogs are getting to be more than just a nuisance. It's to the point where here in Texas, they actually legalized it to um, shoot them from helicopters. So, yeah. And they I mean, do a lot of damage. They do a lot of crop take, damage. Yeah, yeah, they do. And, and like I said, they're just dangerous in their size. When I, I, could, I go bike riding with um, my son, and I have to take a gun with me because we usually, you can see several, I mean, on the side of the road where, you know, cars were damaged, pieces of cars where they hit them, and, you know, they're just, they're, they've really gotten pretty bad. And, and on our property, mm. um, we just found, the last time we went there, there was a litter of 30 babies. Wow. Yeah, That's the most, so. one of the most dangerous animals on the planet is, is a mother hog with her babies. Yeah. I had, I had one put me on a truck for about four hours one day. <laughs> well, I'm the best thing about them. it is they, they don't have very good eyesight. So, I mean, that's one good thing about them. But, uh, I mean, as far as long distances or whatever. But, yeah, I mean, if you startle one, you're gonna you're probably going to pay. Uh, you're going to have some marks on your legs or whatever. So but, what was uh, the uh, what was the total head count of your rally? Did you get one? Um, I didn't get a total head count, but I would guesstimate from there was probably about two hundred and fifty people there. And as usual, I don't know if you saw the page Tony on Facebook. There was like thousands that said they were going to be there. I mean, there was people. It was ridiculous, you know. Yeah, unfortunately, that's. That's kind of the Facebook is one of those places. I don't know. I guess it's just it's like a mirror of life. You know, it's it's so easy to talk about something, and then you know, and and be caught up in the fear of it on Facebook, and then not, and then you know, when it comes time to actually get your butt off the couch and go do it. Yeah, it's, if our it's, Tennessee it's, rallies were <laughs> going to be at the same uh, level of what it was on Facebook, we would have had. You know, five thousand people at, at, at yeah. uh, one of our rallies. Just, yeah. Right. Yeah. But yeah, exactly. I, I know. I, I know how disheartening it is to 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 get a much lower number. I mean, it's it it, it stinks. Yeah. What's funny is you know here I, I'm I travel from Chattanooga and and of course Cheeky Prepper traveled all the way from Memphis and we went to what three of them and. There was, you know, there's, there's what, 500,000 people in Nashville? Yeah. We, we, it felt like we had more people coming from out of town than... than well, in, the worst know. is when you find out that there were more people at the local gun show that day than at the rally. Yeah. That, that was the, the biggest kick in the teeth right there. Yeah. Well, I have to admit, I'd have to think twice about what I'm going <laughs> to... Well, you could have done both. I mean, yeah, what that's, was it, that's an hour? True. That's true. Yeah, I mean, yeah, we, were, exactly. we were there for probably two yeah. hours because we wanted to be, but the, the event itself didn't last probably more than an hour. Yeah. Yeah, and this was, I mean, you know, people, you could come and go and stuff, but the march, it, it's, the, the event itself started at like 10. They had a band, and it was a really good band. I mean, they really, the, um, it was, I don't know, I don't even it was somebody Murdoch that I can't remember even where he's from that actually put the event together and sponsored it. But he did, I have to say, a really good job. They had permitted, they shut down downtown Temple, Texas. Um, they, they had the road shut down so they could actually march down the entire downtown section around the police department and back to the city hall. And now I'll say there was a lot of police there, and I don't think they were there just blocking the streets, if you know what I'm saying. Because if you looked up, they were actually on top of buildings and stuff, too. So it, it was kind of, uh, you know, I was hoping, well, I mean, I was almost 100% positive that nobody would do anything stupid, but you just never know, you know. I, I'm, I'm gonna have to admit that's the, I guess the, the toughest law enforcement presence that I've heard of at one of these rallies. That's the first I've heard of anything like that. There were people on top of buildings. There were like law enforcement on top of buildings. Oh, yeah. 
Well, that's the first time I'd seen that. I, I went to the rallies in Austin and everywhere else. I mean, I've been to a lot of the rallies, and um, at at the last rally that I sponsored, even right here, the only police presence was the deputy that was there to ensure our safety. <laughs> like you know, not that we really needed it, but he was assigned. It was one deputy, but there, I mean, they were literally. I have never, I didn't even know Temple had that many police officers. Now, how said, big, they how, must have pulled in the How big is Temple? How many people, just approximately? 300, 400,000? Less than 50,000. No, less than 50,000. Wow, that is small. I'd yeah. say that's a pretty and good I mean, turnout for, for that small of a city. Well, no, they weren't from Temple. I, I drove for. 40 miles, which isn't far, but I drove there. Um, in fact, a group of us came from where I live to go there, and then there was people from out of state there just to show support. There was people from all over Texas. In fact, there was probably more from other places than there were from Temple. Hmm. Well, that's just what we were just talking about in Nashville, right? <laughs> Right, the yeah. biggest music city, you know, of the world, and here you can't get a thousand people out uh, for a gun rally. But uh, it's funny though, because I think collectively, you know, a lot of people made their presence known, and we, and to this date, we still don't have any gun legislation. So I think we did, you know, I mean, when we think about it, when we, the people who went to the gun rallies, think it was a small turnout, but when you think about the presence that we created nationwide as far as letters and emails and calling your congressman. I mean, it, it did something. I mean, you have a Senate, you have a Democrat, a Democrat controlled Senate that couldn't even pass, you know, any, any type of gun legislation at all. So, right. But there's still no present like a physical presence. That's, the bodies say a lot more than a letter. I don't know. I don't know if you've seen my video where I called the our our my senators uh, Corker and Alexander, and the people you can hear the how tired they are, their voices yeah. from just answering phone calls about the issue, and they're like oh, robots. I, I, you know, yes, we got the same calls and blah blah blah. And yes, we're of course they you know they have the same old typical story every time, but still you can tell they're getting hundreds right. of phone calls, if not thousands. You know. Yeah, because so. I, I called Rick Perry's office again the other day, and she answered the phone saying, are you calling about Senate Bill 5? And I said, well, no, actually, that's not the one I'm calling about. But they had gotten so many calls about it that they were answering the phone asking if that's what you were calling about. So, yeah, they'd been getting a lot of calls. But we, we luckily, we didn't get all the pro-gun legislation that we wanted this time, but we did get quite a few pro-gun legislation. I mean, but it's stuff that we shouldn't have even had to have to start with, but it's something. Right. Well, even, I mean, <laughs> the way I, that's weird. Uh, that wasn't me, by the way. That was uh, not sure. <laughs> well, I mean, any kind, to me, um, I know, I know people are, always say that, and I hear them to say that, that, you know, we're, they're working on legislation we shouldn't have had to work on, but guess what? That means they're not working on anti-gun legislation at the same time. So anything oh, that would take up, anything that would take up their time, you know, <laughs> to get you know get them through their session right. and get them out of the, get them get them out of the get them out of the Congress bill the the Capitol building back home where they can't do any damage, right. you know, on vacation or whatever, you know. Uh, yeah, and we're lucky in, in Texas they only have session every other year, so wow. we only have to worry about them every two years. <laughs> wow, I didn't know that. That's cool. Yeah, but so I, I, I understand the frustration order. because I've been calling um, and sending letters to what's his name. Anyway, the our state. Um, uh, Majority leader, what is his name? GQ about the uh, um, database, the open, the public database for CCW. Um, but I think that it should be as difficult. I think you should have to file a public information, uh, you know, 
the what, what are the claims, the, the information claims that you can file. I, I uh, think the open record. Yeah. Yeah, open records. I think you should, because it's funny, because when I call the state about this, I have a video on it where I call the state, and I ask them for particular information on a person's driver's license, and they're like, "Well, uh, you can't have that. What? Why are you? You know, they acted all surprised." And I said, "Well." I'm sorry. Someone can look at my information based on the fact that I hold, you know, a, a concealed carry permit. Why can't I look at their information based on the driver's license information? I think it should be just as hard to get. I, you know what I mean? I don't think it's. Yeah, you know, I don't. I don't think you should be able to type in a name and get it public, you know, private information on an individual just because they have a CCW. You know. In Texas, you can't. It's confidential. The only person, the only people that can get that information about your CHL other than you is a, a criminal justice agency. That's it. The newspapers, nobody can get that information. It's confidential. Who's saying I'm a sex machine? Good gosh. Why are you so sexy, Tony? Okay, we got us a, <laughs> we got our first uh, Monday Night Live troll in the chat. That's funny. Sorry, I, I was I was gonna say well, let's, let's look at some comments, and I go over there and it says Tony is a sexy machine. So anyway, that's not true. Uh, GQ Prepper, you you might be talking about. No, he's talking about the guy that. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe Christine or Wyclive, but not, not Tony. But uh, does anybody in the chat have a question um, for Christine or anybody else? Let's see. Let's remove the bad language. What about you, Wyclive? What have you been up to as far as um, anything... Any, anything exciting lately? <laughs> Not really, buddy. Just trying <laughs> to heal my arm up a little bit. Trying to what? Heal my arm up a little bit. Oh, what happened to your arm? I ripped a bunch of uh, ligers and muscles and whatnot. I don't know. I've got to go oh. with a uh, CAT scan down here. Or MRI, I'm sorry. Huh. Yeah. Next week or so. Well, I hope that all turns out all right. Yeah, it'll be all right. I have, uh, you know, started this uh, diet. I tell you what, if if anybody's ever tried to do without bread for, it's only been two days. I haven't had any bread, any grains, and I swear my body was addicted to bread. It was, or some, I'm going through withdrawals. I went, a, a, I went two, three years without eating bread. Now you send a picture there, and that's after I gained weight back when I ripped my stomach muscles off. Is that? Uh, that was the type of diet that you went on? Was, uh, was basically the Atkins diet. About the okay. same thing. I haven't really paid attention. I haven't really done any research on the Atkins Just diet. Just eat meat and don't eat bread or anything? What? Well, I thought you know, I would miss bread, but I, actually I was quite surprised. It wasn't... Uh, I never really have had a craving. I figured like morning biscuits would be the number one thing that would make me cry or donuts. <laughs> but uh, those were those were not the things that I, I actually missed. Well, I would either get like cinnamon swirl coffee cake, and I would justify it. This is at Starbucks. I would justify it because they called it low-fat cinnamon swirl coffee cake, right? Yeah, of course. <laughs> or, or I would get uh, oatmeal, which is not too bad for you, but even oatmeal apparently is out on this diet. You can't have any grains at all. Which I was kind of surprised when I started looking at at it, and I, I was wondering what you all thought about the research about the, you know, some inherent uh, ingredient or whatever. Well, you know, that's when I started my channel. That was the first thing I wanted to do because uh, my opinion is is that the most important prep is your own health and fitness, and to this day I still haven't done that video. But now, since I have been, uh, as you would say, on the couch, uh, since my medical issues, and now the doctor has just now released me to, uh, I'm now able to do some low-level exercise as of this week. Uh, I think now is a good time for me to pick up and do what I wanted to do. But, uh, you know, it's, everybody's different, Tony. 
everybody is different. I truly believe that. Now, not the same thing does not work for everybody. Well, I can almost feel I can feel something either chemically or or physically, whatever. It's not emotional. <laughs> it's not. It it's not. Not. But it I can. Be. No, it's it's going to be. No, it is going to be some emotional. How how long have you been on 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 uh, uh, no carb or low carb diet? How, how how many days? Just so far two, but I can already okay. feel the difference yeah. between not having any bread. Already, well, it, no, it chemically it, in your brain right now it is triggering. You probably gonna. It's, it's same with someone who has to do without caffeine. It's the same as someone who has quit smoking. You are going to be going through withdrawals, and you're going to feel it. Hello, <laughs> three, uh, three, thirteen, thirteen. Uh, I haven't smoked cigarettes since then, and trust me, it. I haven't. Uh, I quit drinking about uh, fourteen, fifteen years ago, and I can hear country music, and my mouth will start watering just like I'm drinking tequila. I mean, I can actually yeah. taste it. Now, my eyes start watering when I hear country music. <laughs> that that <laughs> not bother me. But I seriously can taste tequila when I like Merle Haggard or George Jones or something. And it's been that long. Huh. That's amazing. Uh, I'd say I, I never really, really thought, it's psychological. I, I never really thought. You know, it's funny, too, because all of the things that go along with bread are... are, are you know, I, I, I ate pizza probably, I don't know, two nights a week at least. And so when you do away with bread, that automatically goes away with all the things that used to go with the bread, like cheese and, you know, pepperonis and, right. <laughs> you know, it's kind of hard to eat a pizza without any Is bread. Is that enough of pepperoni and the cheese? Yeah, well, I can't have any dairy products either. I haven't had any dairy products um, or bread. So what do you eat? It's, a, it's the hunter-gatherer diet. It's basically uh, vegetables. Um, and, and I, I don't know, you know, you hear, you read all this research, anytime you do research on a topic, you always tend to get the research that was done positively about that subject, right? So I, the research I've been finding about the way humans used to eat 10 or 20,000 years ago, before we started developing this, this, um, agriculture, you know, agriculture, basically. Uh, which basically means, you know, grains, wheat, oats, whatever, rice, whatever. But um, uh, it's basically, uh, the way I understand it, of course, I haven't read everything about it yet, but it's it's um, your, obviously your vegetables, but uh, non-starchy vegetables, you know, root, root vegetables like carrots, potatoes. But it's, it's more like in the potato line, it's more on the side of sweet potato and not... The regular potato start has more starch, I guess, than a sweet potato. I don't know. Y'all can y'all can correct me on this. I'm not an expert so far. Uh, sweet potatoes are usually allowed. Yeah. yeah, and so and then you know you're allowed lean meat, uh, and I'm just eating meat. I never was honestly. I know it's hard to believe, but I was a big meat eater. Um, but uh, so I'll, I'll eat. Like tonight, I had the salmon, and that's funny because uh, when I first started doing this research, I told my wife, I said, I'm going to cook, the first meal I'm going to cook is uh, that honey pecan crusted salmon that we had at some restaurant. And she said, salmon? I said, yeah, salmon. She said, you mean salmon? I said, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> every time I've said salmon here lately, everybody corrects me. But I've always said... I've well, always said salmon. Is the L silent? I, I think I, I when I was raised on salmon patties, okay, my mother cooked salmon patties all the time, and so salmon I, patties or croquettes. Yeah, yeah, croquettes. The rich people had croquettes. <laughs> the poor people had salmon patties. <laughs> I don't know. What do you say? Have been eating salmon unless you lived by the river. <laughs> Well, I was so, born in Oregon, so it's salmon. A salmon. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. <clears throat> okay, so uh, what do you guys, what do you guys think about where 3D printing is going? Oh boy, I don't know. I'm trying to avoid the 3D printing stuff tonight. I'm I'm about burnt out on it already. People have asked me when I'm going to finish the Liberator. I'm like, I don't know. 
it's almost like it's old news now. Um, anyway, I was trying to catch a few of the comments, and uh, uh, anyway, I don't, I don't, I don't mean to be rude. A yellow finger one three, three two, but it's just um, I don't know. I was really hoping to talk about uh, Christine's uh, rally tonight because I thought that was kind of interesting, and I didn't know it was connected to the fella who was on the news. That's interesting. I will be a safety sally, though. I think those people should carry their rifles pointed with the muzzles up on the concrete or asphalt. I wanted to ask you, um, did I hear a round go off during your rally, or was that a... What was no. that? Okay, okay. Now that was uh, a... Now I know what you're talking about. No, that was clapping. I, when I was watching the video, I was thinking the same thing, but it was someone clapped. And I thought I heard somebody say, was that a rubber bullet or something like that, or... Uh, maybe oh, I that know. was probably... That was, <laughs> that was just me and my friends... Our little commentary. I they, sometimes they forget I have a camera rolling all the time. You should have heard some of the stuff they were joking about. So, um, but actually, all of the chambers had been um, had been flagged. So, I mean, there was they were red flagged every every gun there. I think there might have been one or two, and they had no magazines, even though they didn't they didn't flag them. So, yeah, I it guess was I voluntary. You don't have to. I'm kind of sensitive lately uh, because of this fella who's, you know, pushing this DC thing where where he wants to carry loaded ARs to, to the, now when I see these rallies with ARs, I'm thinking, oh, are they loaded or not? <laughs> you know. Well, you know, and again, it's legal, but we opted as a group to not do it. You know, and and a lot of people kind of gave criticized and didn't show up specifically because of that. They said, well, it's legal. Yeah, but the point is, we were there to protest a right, you know, because a right was being infringed. We were not there to see how many people we could make nervous and if we could put the police department on edge. Here's here's what bugs me, okay? Safety Which, rule number three, always keep the gun and load until you're ready to use it, okay? That, so I don't understand how so many people can say they they back the NRA or support the NRA, but they don't support their safety rules. You know, always keep the gun pointed in a safe direction, number one. Keep your finger off the trigger until you're ready to fire, number two. Keep the gun loaded yep. until you're ready to fire, number three. I could go down all the way down the list. And, and people... Well, that number three kind of goes out the window when I walk out my door. Well, well, not, well not, if, <laughs> not if you're me, you don't, because I don't carry with one in the chamber. Well, it, it does for most people, though, and even the NRA says they are not talking about your primary defense weapon. They're talking about your other weapons in your home should not be locked and loaded if it's not your defense weapon because I'm not going to leave my defense weapon unloaded until I'm ready to use it. Well, okay. I, I, I wouldn't I'm not, be a very yeah. good... This is going to be one of those... <laughs> uh, we've had... I don't know, since I'm 20, I probably know 10 stories of uh, kids picking up guns and shooting someone or themselves with a loaded gun. So I think I'm kind of, that's one of my pet well, peeves. Well, that's a whole different so, topic, Tony. Oh, when I, I understand. I say a defense I, weapon, that weapon is on me. Right. And I, I don't, I don't want, I'm not going to debate that. that. that I, that's a personal, yeah. when I tell people that, who ask me for advice when I'm out at the range and I'm, you know, I am an NRA instructor, I tell them that you it's a personal choice uh, and not to be affected by big mouths on YouTube because there's a lot of people on YouTube who will call you a you know all kinds of names if you don't care if they're around in the chamber and and for some reason you lose your manhood if you don't carry with the round in the chamber? Well, some of us, like my wife, carries a revolver. <laughs> yeah, well, I would never give my wife a revolver. <laughs> well, that's her choice, not she mine. Shoot. I know. I said I would never. No, she, oh. can, she can do whatever she wants to. But, uh, um, I, I, again, we're getting into personal preference here. You know? No. Uh, and and I I'm, agree. Not gonna I'm not going to argue this with anybody. I'm just telling you. Well, okay. I just I, I just had to call it out. I mean, it's just... Oh, I, I know. I'm just saying that, that's your opinion, and I have a lot of 
background, you know, on my opinion. I have a long history with my opinion, and nobody's going to change my opinion. <laughs> so well, if, yeah. I can't, if I can't I draw my weapon and wrap that. around in, you know, a second and a half to protect myself, then I probably don't need to be carrying, uh, you know. Okay, but I'm not, you I'm not going to have... I'm not going to have somebody walk up and draw my weapon and shoot me with it, or I'm not going to have some kid, you know, I'm not, I'm not going to accidentally leave it laying around so somebody can just pull the three and a half pound trigger that I have on my clock uh, without any effort. Well, that would be irresponsible regardless. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah. to no saying leaving a gun around for children to pick up. But my question to you, Tony, is you just said if you can. not Rack it and put around in the chamber. Does that include drawing it within one and a half seconds? You can do that. Uh, well, I used to be able to. <laughs> I feel a challenge coming on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. I mean, I used to be able to draw it and put five rounds in. What was it? Five seconds. We, we even had a challenge not too long ago. We had a challenge. It was a. Uh, Five rounds in five seconds in uh, five inch square. It was five, five, five. Remember? Five yards, I believe. It was five yards, five. But you weren't drawing, were you? Uh, well, yeah, we were. Yeah. yeah. It's not, it really doesn't take that much time, honestly. Well, I'm, I'm going to admit it took me a long time before I was comfortable carrying a chambered loaded Glock. Uh, it took me finding the right holster before I felt comfortable uh, walking around with that Glock with, with, with it went in the pipe. But I've done it probably the past couple of years. Now, I will admit this. I'll do it with my Boberg, okay, because it has a 10-pound uh, trigger that's like a mile long. Yeah, uh, I and mean, I've done that with, uh, with, with but the, the Glock was kind of, I, it's just one of those things. I think a lot of people, when they first get at something like that, they may feel a little hesitant of carrying one in the chamber. But anyway, I know I'm going to catch a lot of grief over that one, so maybe we could move on to another subject. <laughs> <laughs> Let me just throw this in. There was 10 of us growing up, I was, me and nine sisters, and all of us toted. And uh, some of them, they, you know, chose not to, to chamber around. But we all carried, I mean, holidays around the house, it was like Wild West. As you walked through the door, you checked your gun with the old man. Uh, but, yeah, he'd be sitting there with like 10, 12 guns. And, uh, you know, grandkids and little kids and whatever, you know. But we was all taught from a very extreme young age. You don't touch that. Well, that, ever got that, hurt. Yeah, that's true in our family. But I've heard, I mean, I, I mean, how long ago was it, two or three months ago, that I got a call from Steve McNeil, the owner of Keystone Firearms, uh, basically crying on my shoulder because I would gotten to know him through the Pink Cricket Project saying that he had to lock down his factory <laughs> and he was under basically a lockdown uh, because people were threatening his life because the lady uh, left the loaded 22 in the corner and the kid shot his sister. Remember that? It was in Kentucky. Yeah. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, and, I'm not saying and, it don't happen. I was just saying. Yeah. And then just recently here, another closer to home, um, someone was just, I mean, left it laying on a bed or something for like five minutes out of his holster, and the kid came up and pulled the trigger. And I think he either killed, I think he killed himself or his father, one or the other. And that that's happened two or three times in the past year. So I just, I just, it's a personal choice, and I don't, I don't, I don't criticize anybody for doing it either way. And I just wish people, especially on YouTube, would stop beating their chest about it. Because I, I actually unsubscribe to people over this issue because they don't want to sit there and beat their chest and say, you're not a man if you don't care with a round in the chamber and you're uh, all kinds of expletives. And, <laughs> yeah. you know, who, who, are, who are they to decide for someone else what's best for them? It's yeah. well, what are they going to do, bust a caps lock on you? Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it's just something that everybody has to decide. Well, I'll, you know. I'll throw it out there. I'm extra wimpy because I actually carry a small can of mace usually in my pocket. There's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. <laughs> well, I'm just, I'm just saying. Usually, I'm, I'm usually I'm quicker to grab it than I am the the, the firearm. There may be cases like me. I'm at I'm at school every day. I have to go pick up Alex at school. 
and technically I'm not supposed to have that firearm. And so sometimes I don't even have it. And, you know, people would, in, in this attitude, well, if you don't carry your, you know, your concealed carry piece all the time, you're not a man or you're not a woman, a real woman. You know, it's just ridiculous, the kind of garbage you run into on YouTube. Yeah, I never, I never, ever in in my 50 years of being alive have run into anybody in real life that will say the crap that is said on YouTube. Never. Well, uh, no, no, um, no, of course not. Now, you know, I have friends who, if I, you know, I've talked to about this stuff before, and they're, they're just like, hey, that's cool, you know. They don't say, you know, you don't have hair on your chest because you don't carry a, a round in the chamber. I don't know, James Jager might. <laughs> oh, uh, now I like James. I, he can say whatever he wants to. I really don't care. But uh, <laughs> I don't know what it is about James. I just like him. But um, but I, I always kind of laugh when he says something like that. For some reason, I think it's funny when he says it. <laughs> yeah, I like when he questioned my sexuality for having yeah. cats. That was... <laughs> oh, I didn't know that. He did that? <laughs> oh, yeah. He, 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 he said that only, uh, uh, we'll just go on a rant here. He said oh, there's yeah. only two type of guys that own cats, and that is uh, super villains and homosexuals. And I'm like, well. <laughs> You're super villain. <laughs> well, that's been super villain. <laughs> uh, that's funny. But anyway, you know, I'll, I'll tell people, and honestly, I don't, I, I'm not like Christine. I don't train people professionally. Um, I got I got my basic rifle and pistol certification from the NRA to teach scouts. And um, so I've only actually trained a few people professionally and I tell them that it's something you will have to work into and if you don't feel comfortable carrying with the round in the chamber, that you know, do what you feel comfortable with. The important thing is that if if it's gonna stop you from wanting to carry then you shouldn't you shouldn't do it. You should do whatever. The first step is just getting it on your side, you know, concealing it. And if, if you'll do that because you you know if you'll do it without a round in the chamber, then that's what I would do. You know, what I, mean? I wouldn't leave it at home because you're afraid to carry with one in the chamber. Um, anyway, I, I said I wasn't gonna, gonna get off on that, and I did anyway. So. <laughs> <laughs> what did John, Wayne, John Wayne said in the shooters, load five. If you feel like you need the six, load it. <laughs> well, you know, I don't know. I just, uh, what can I say? I like cats too, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> tell, me, uh, tell me more about your channel. The young lady from Texas. Christine. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> um, nothing much. It's just some stuff on guns, and uh, sometimes I do some videos to clarify some Texas laws for people because some of it, the way it's written in the penal codes, is kind of hard to understand. So that's mostly what it's about. And of course, you know, gun rallies and rights and responsibilities type of thing. Right on. I've got a lot of friends that live in Texas, so. Oh really? Where? Uh, basically all over. I've got a I've got one oh. friend who's a old biker who's a minister. He has a ministry down there, but anywhere he goes, he packs. Uh, just friends basically all over Texas. Uh, basically, internet friends, people I've met at rallies, uh, bike rallies, stuff like that. We have uh, one lady. Yeah, it's probably that a lot of them. Okay. Yeah, there's one lady that, that drives from Texas to come up here to Tennessee to ride uh, quads with us, and she'll come like two times a year. Wow. And she packs about everywhere she goes, but she's basically all over the United States, and you know the, the type of employment she's in. Wow. Hmm. I've only been to Texas one time so far, and that was the uh, Dallas airport. <laughs> and uh, well, then Mr. you haven't really been. <laughs> I know that's what everybody says. <laughs> we, we we had a little bit of a layover there, and uh, and 
we almost missed our plane because of the whole situation where you have to ride the bus around the to the term. We were at the wrong terminal, and we had to get on the bus thing that oh, rides yeah. around to the different terminals, and we almost missed our plane. And it was, uh, I remember it was hot. That's what I remember. Oops. But oh yeah. A friend of mine who goes out there to play golf says that it's you know it's not as humid as as it is in Tennessee, so you can stand a hundred degrees like you can't here, you know. That depends. It's been in the 90s and really humid the last two weeks. When you say humid, what do you mean for Texas? Like 40, 50 percent? Well, or? the humidity has been like what? I was trying to get an idea of what you all consider high humidity there. As in well, percent. The other day, it was like 78 percent. Holy cow, that's humid, yeah. That's an average yeah. of seventy eight percent chatting. Exactly. We were like, please rain, just please rain and yeah. you know, it drizzled a little bit. You know how it is. It gives you a little bit of drizzle and then it just makes you miserable. Hmm. You could like see steam coming off of the asphalt. That's so, normal Tennessee weather. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, Christine, do you uh and, you know I was going to ask you if you um, you you instruct professionally, right? I mean, you actually get paid to do it, right? Yes. Okay, that's cool. Do you have like an average? Is that all you do, or do you do that like part time? Or I did I do it part time. Um, I actually specialize in I I have men, women, I have everybody, but. I specialize in um, timid women and elderly people. Hmm. Very cool. The, yeah. the man I had in my class last weekend was 92. Hmm. Sweet. Yeah, and he was he was he was still a good shot. So. <laughs> I tell you, the yeah. older the older guys that I see at our range are, are very methodical about everything they do. You know, it's it's fun. Yeah. It's fun to watch them because, yeah, here I am jerking stuff out of the truck, throwing it around. And they're just like, you know, let's take this one box and place it on the bench yes. correctly. <laughs> you know, let's open exactly. it. Exactly. Examine it. Gosh, they sound like me, Tony. <laughs> Uh, and I thought, I hope I could at least live tonight, too. I'll be happy <laughs> to, to be that way. Um, but it's funny because I, I'm helping our uh, rifle club make an orientation video right now. I'm going through the editing process. And while I was shooting the raw video, I went out during the week because I was hoping there would be nobody there. And on one range, and we have five or six, I don't know, seven ranges or whatever. On one range, there was these two old guys. And I said, okay, I'll just hang out, you know. And there they go, one shot every five minutes, you know. <laughs> I finally went up and asked them <laughs> if I could make the range cold for a minute just to shoot some video. And they were real nice about it. But um, it's funny. Of course, they've probably been members there for 30 years. Yeah. Well, I don't know. Um like in Tennessee when you get your CHL, do you have to do a shooting proficiency? Yeah, there's a test, but it's part of the test. I don't know if I call proficiency, but... <laughs> well, you have to hit, you have to get, uh, what, 30 some odd rounds out of 48 on the, on the in the black. So, I mean, I mean, but it gives the instructor a chance to see if you can actually handle the firearm or not. Yeah, and I talked to ours, and he said, "Yeah, he's actually uh, failed people before." So that's why I've wondered if anyone's actually failed that in Tennessee. Yeah, I, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's funny. The day I I did mine, there were pretty decent shooters. There was one guy that was kind of it was a little weird, but uh, he was having some malfunctions, which made him yeah. know more about his pistol. He had borrowed a pistol, which is a bad idea. And uh, I learned that the hard way about a rifle. I took to the. I thought I was going to be cool and take a, a borrow on AR to go to my uh, NRA rifle instructor course. You know, I had already taken the student course, but when I went to take the rifle the instructor course, I took I borrowed an AR 
and I didn't realize the guy, he, he, the, he said, when I got back, I said something about your, your aim point. I hate optics, you know, and I started to rip the thing off. But anyway, his aim point was not co-witnessing with the... <laughs> <laughs> and I was having a hard time trying to figure out which is which. I passed, you know, I, I qualified. But uh, he said, oh, I, I, my eyes are cross-eyed or something. I was like, what? <laughs> <laughs> so in other words, if you weren't, if your eyes weren't exactly like his, it wouldn't, you couldn't get the aim point to cope, you know. It was a little, it was a little uh, confusing. So anyway, that's a bad story. But this guy who was having a hard time, had borrowed a pistol, but anyway, he he that wasn't really. Uh, anyway, the instructor said, "Yeah, he had failed several people in the last year." And uh, uh, it's not as bad as when I went through and got mine. I went through with a bunch of pr uh, probation officers, and half of them were ladies, and they had never probably picked up a gun in their life. Uh, matter of fact, the instructor had to take two of his pistols. And qualify for them. I almost yeah. walked away. But How I was can like, you do that? Oh. <laughs> because yeah. he was a he was a parole officer also. Hmm. Oh. And had been a state trooper for some thirty some odd years. So most yeah. of it was pretty easy. I mean, it was like what seven yards. Uh, what are the distances? Five, seven, and something else. Fifteen, I think. Yeah, so 45 feet is the most you're shooting at, and I think at that point it's only, what, 15 rounds? It, no, it, yeah, well, 50 round total. That's right. It was, that's right. That's right. <laughs> he he yeah. said, okay, you know, already on the line, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, I just pulled out my mind. Uh, it was Kerner Smith at the time. And I was like, bam, 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 bam. And he's like, whoa, whoa, whoa. He said, it's not speed shooting. I said, buddy, this is where I normally shoot. He said, okay, go ahead. <laughs> so. Yeah, see, with, with ours, the way we did, there's 50, you shoot 50 rounds total, and it's at three different stages, like you said, but the first one is at only nine feet. Right. Because what we, so they did 20 rounds at only nine feet. You're already almost, you know, qualified by then, so. I told him, you don't even have to look. You could close your eyes and point your gun and hit the target at 19. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, one valuable piece of advice the man did give me, or I consider it valuable, was he said, never qualify 100% or as a, be considered a marksman. Should you ever have to use your gun, shoot somebody, that could be used against you in court. Well, they didn't. They didn't document our school. He just passed us. He didn't document how many rounds that we got. I mean, the guy that did ours. So he had to write ours down. Though. I got mine a yeah. long time ago. We write them down. We actually score it. Yeah. Well, you know, I don't know. Maybe he did, but he let me take my target with me, so he didn't have my target. Yeah. We, I just yeah. cut out the score corner, and they take their target, and and I have to keep a copy of their scorecard along with their, you know, written test and stuff. But um, we have to, one of the things, they don't just go to the line and shoot 20 rounds. They have to do different instructions. They have to follow instructions and show, they have to exhibit control of the weapon. Right. And by doing so, sometimes I, I give them, I have to give them a command that says, You'll fire one round every three seconds. You will not fire until you hear the word fire. If they pull the trigger before I say to you, they don't get credit. Now, one of the, th the, the thing you just mentioned, and you other guys chime in if this sounds right to you, but uh, the uh, do not qualify 100% because they could be used as, you know, against you, and, you know, if you had to go to court and shoot I don't understand how uh, scoring 100% on paper at a range would ever yeah. uh, roll over into an actual defense situation. Because uh, I'm going to guarantee, I mean, I'm, you know, I qual with the Army, I qualified expert. Every time I go, I'm, you know, expert. I can shoot anything at a range, but I guarantee you, a defense situation, right. uh, it's, I'm going to be hitting all over the place probably. I think that guy was probably just getting his little uh, his little legal argument mixed up because, yeah. I mean, I hit all of the, he, our instructor didn't say anything about that, and of course I hit, you know, all of the 
paper I was supposed to hit. So technically, I got 100%, but I didn't. Yeah, you know, I wasn't really. That wasn't the intention. I mean, I was trying to do the best I could. My last didn't. four rounds didn't hit paper. Huh? <laughs> My last four rounds did not hit paper. Period. But uh, the man, he was a state trooper for thirty something years, and that's the type of people I don't argue with. Oh yeah, no, I'm not. I'm not saying you should have argued with him. I'm just saying, um, if you if you really think about it, if you ever hear like a, a GI that has to shoot, you know, shot somebody or whatever, the, one of the first things they bring up is, well, this guy could have wounded somebody instead of actually shot him because he was a marksman. You're not. You're not. You don't have to. I mean. You, you, I'm, we're not. Nobody really is taught to wound anybody, <laughs> no. right? I mean, not not self defense right. shooting. You more likely uh, to hurt somebody trying to win. To, you know what I tell people: you can stand there at the range with a target that's not moving while you're not moving, and try to shoot. You know the shoulder or whatever it is that you can. Or these people, you know, that are sitting there doing head shots. Now you're moving. The target is moving. Try to do the same thing. Yeah, we all understand that. Tell it to an attorney, though. Yeah. Well, I mean, you're you're taught to shoot center mass. That's my whole point right there. If when you're in a stressful situation, you're going to be aiming center of mass, and you're going to fire three shots or whatever it is, and what happens happens. You know, most likely you're going to do what you're trying to do. Yeah, most likely that if you do what you're trying to do, the guy's going to die, or whoever it is is going to. Is be, gonna be dead. <laughs> well, he's a, yeah. well, as we were trained, he's going to stop. Yeah, stop. Yeah, exactly. That, Thank you. And that's the you. same thing here in Texas. You don't shoot to kill. You shoot to stop. Whatever force is necessary. So uh, I guess my point is, is that if you're not willing to take that chance that the person is going to die, then you shouldn't. I'm not sure that you should be carrying a firearm. And you know, that's just one more. I think of you know, you hear all these uh, all these things that you shouldn't shouldn't do because just yeah. in case you get into you know an actual defense situation, it could be you know that's something that could be used against you. I mean, I think I think there's so much of that. Uh, uh, type of information out there that, which is, I've, I think most of them are just outright rumors. Uh, somebody's uh, logic that just gets passed on, and you know, me being around a lot of military and law enforcement, they pick up the stuff just like everybody else. You know, I've, I've, I, I couldn't tell you. Well, we've all been in the gun store and be next to some uh, police officer that has no idea what they're talking about, but you know, it's just they're 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 just people like everybody else, and they could have bad information just like you know the next guy. Who all has been shot out here? I got my hand up. Only only by small caliber gun. Uh, <laughs> I saw pellets. Yeah. yeah. My, I, we I used, don't we used know. to have pellet we used to have pellet and BB gun wars when I was just, when I was a kid, which is bad. Yes. I know. That's don't anybody ever do that, okay? I have but, had uh, uh where, where I used to live, the saying was, be not afraid of the bullet with your name on it, but the bullet who is marked to whom it may concern. Uh, I had three bullets come close. Well, let me say, it. I've had four close calls. Uh, only one, I might have been the target, and that was one that came through my windshield while driving, and uh, it hit the headrest next to me which was, was a close call, but I don't know if I was the actual target. The other were three rounds that went inside my house at two different times, uh, but they that was somebody shooting at somebody else. <laughs> that'd be enough to, <laughs> that'd well, be that's enough what, to well, get my I, attention for sure. It hap- I mean, unless you're in, like, in a military situation, when it happens, you don't really think about it because... Uh, I know the one time that I heard a bullet whiz by my head when I was hunting, um, it, it didn't even scare me because I really didn't know what it was until after the fact. And, and I wasn't expecting someone to shoot near me or at me. So it was just like, whew, you know, that noise you hear when the bullet flies by. 
uh, and you go, huh, that was a bullet that just flew by. <laughs> you know, and it wasn't it wasn't scary. It wasn't. Uh, well, when I know. had that one come through my windshield in my neighborhood back then, I you know I I don't mean to be disrespectful, but I probably heard more gunfire than someone who was stationed over in Afghanistan or Iraq. I mean, you didn't duck, you didn't flinch. Yeah, you would think I lived next to a gun range. I mean, it was just something you were used to. Um, so when that bullet went through that windshield, I knew exactly what had happened, and I was, uh, uh, I, I went pretty much almost into shock because I thought I had gotten hit because I had, I, I did get sprayed with a little bit of little bit pieces of glass, and uh, I actually when I because that's only two blocks from my house, I turned around, sped back home. And had my girlfriend at the time check me for holes because I thought I'd actually might have been shot. Hmm. Yeah, I can oh, see why that would be different. Because, I mean, you know the sound I'm talking about where you can hear the sort of bullet zip by your head. I, I never got to hear that. Mine was either coming through the, the windows or through the windshield. It almost sounds like a. It's, I mean, but you know what it is. And then when you see the hunter on the other side of the field, and you go, hmm. <laughs> I, ne but, I never lived in a house that didn't have bullet holes in it or burned down when I was growing up. And then after I left home at 14, I spent, well, most of my life in motorcycle clubs until I, you know, just completely done 180 and changed my life. And uh, seen a lot of blood. I've been stabbed twice, but soon, yeah, I heard a lot of that whistle go by my head more than once. And it was mm. a freaky feeling, just like he just said. <clears throat> well, the only time I've ever been shot was, was with a salt pellet, and that was by the farmer because I was cutting through his beet field after being told over and over not to do it. <laughs> <laughs> well, if I, if, I, if I counted BBs and pellets, and I would say a bunch of times, well, yeah. uh, we, were, we were rambunctious boys. We intentionally did that to each other. Yeah. Dumb. Yeah. We were, we were very dumb boys. We used to have this uh, rule that, you know, no aiming for the head, you know. Of course, then always we would get, get hit the head. Well, we would, you know, we'd get down in ditches to where the only thing they could see was our head. <laughs> 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 this is dumb. We need to get out in the open so they'll shoot us in the leg. <laughs> you know. You shoot your eye out, kid. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the craziness of kids. It's funny. Uh, and my brother had a pump, and we would always be like, okay, you can't pump it more than three times, you know. And here I had my daisy, you know, red rider <laughs> that wouldn't shoot 30 feet. And he had this, you can hear him in the distance going, pump, 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 pump. Hey, stop pumping. <laughs> uh, I had a buddy of mine shot a tree, and the baby come back and landed right in his eyelid. And he was, ah. <laughs> that was so hard. But for any kids listening to this, don't do that. Yes. It's dangerous. No, because uh, there was a couple of trips to the emergency room where we had to get one of those things cut out. So hmm. We had one old boy over here that dove in, and uh, I don't know if you all know, it's called, they call him a buffalo around here. It's some kind of type of a carp that just barely missed his heart. It went through his, his chest. And just barely missed his heart, and he ran all the way home carrying it. And they said if he deployed that, a carp. A fish? And one of the, yes. One of the side fins stabbed him right in the chest, and he caught it and ran home with that fish. And they said if he, at the hospital, if he'd have pulled it out, he would have bled death before he got home. Said it was just like a quarter wrench missing his heart. So he was in a boat or something? How did, how did no, he was over there swimming. He ran home about a mile. <laughs> That's crazy. So yeah. the fish just ran into him that fast? Well, there, there's a creek where, you know, where they would uh, go in and out of the lake. And uh, we used to take well, we used to take sticks and club them. There'd be so many fish running through there. This is back in the 70s. Hmm. And uh, we had one place that was pretty deep, and he just dove in, and the one on the side... Uh, Fins stabbed him right in the chest there, man. It was the weirdest thing. He squalling, run off, and I was like, where'd he go to? Come find out next day, getting stabbed in the chest. Ouch. But they called those fish buffalo. 
And I have never heard that term anywhere else. I've been. We have a local car fish. We have a local th uh, theme park called Lake Winnipesoka near here, and they have the biggest. They've had a lake. Well, there's a lake there, Lake Winnipesoka, and they have the biggest carp that I've ever seen in my life. I mean, they're like four feet long, and they will come up, and people, yeah, you know, they look like they're waiting on kids to fall in the water, you know, but it's really you no. Know, they're waiting on people to feed them, but. Uh, <coughs> I've never seen a carp, not in the wild, that big. Yeah, those things, they used to run certain times of year. They're pretty good size, man. Uh, they had a, it was, ended up being with brother-in-law. He took a stick and beat a, a, a catfish. You know what a number four warsh tub is? Probably about three foot across. Mm -hmm. it was, he took a stick and beat that thing in the head. So he finally got it up, to, you know, where it couldn't couldn't move, kind of knocking it up on the bank, and it was all he could do to pick it up, and it wouldn't fit in a number number three wash tub. It was probably about four foot long. Holy cow! Oh, I know yeah, what I wanted. To, I know what I wanted to ask you all. Uh, did you hear about the Supreme Court not, uh, decision today about the uh, the fact that if you're arrested, they're able to take your DNA? Um, uh, apparently that they can take a DNA sample if you're arrested. The, the Supreme Court just ruled on that today. Isn't that uh, crazy? Uh, what? I don't know. I, I don't see it much different than, I mean, it's a unique identifier, and if I look at it in that light, then I don't see it much different than fingerprinting. Well, but they're not taking your DNA when you take a fingerprint. But they're right. taking a unique identifier, right? Yeah. I just think it's strange. I think, you know, we're moving yeah, into this area. It can be used to recreate other stuff. Yeah, I just think it's strange. And and I would think, well, the thing is... Are you uh, being arrested or convicted? Just arrested? Arrested. Just arrested. Yeah. They're not good that, money today, the, if I ever do that. What I mean, what if you were arrested wrongfully arrested? Yeah, I mean that's that's yeah, that's what I'm saying. Most that's of the, just, uh, that's ridiculous. Three of the conservative uh, judges basically made the point that you would really need for something like that. They would like to see a warrant to be able to go into your mouth and take you know do a swab of your <laughs> take DNA. You know that you would need probable cause or whatever. Uh, at least have a warrant to take. Well, my 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 gut feeling, you know, is when I hear something like that is is to get all burled up and say, oh no, you're not. But you know, I'm just trying to think outside my own mind here. Is you know, again, it's if I'm arrested, if I'm just arrested, not convicted. If I'm just arrested, I get fingerprinted, right? I do here. Right. Uh, if they take me downtown and process me, if they arrest me, they're going to they're take my <clears throat> fingerprints. It's a unique identifier. Uh, DNA, uh, I mean, uh, worst case scenarios is they start deciding that they're going to start uh, discriminating or going against people who have a certain DNA characteristic or something like that. I mean, I can see... If you wanted to go that far, I'm just, I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to... I'm just trying to find the difference between... The, the something like fingerprinting and Here, here's the difference DNA it is uh, a bottle of fluid. DNA testing has come to the point now to where it's almost like the Bible in other words if a, if a lawyer says I have DNA evidence it's like the jury goes oh you have DNA evidence so you must be guilty you know it's it's the technology has come to a point now to where it's kind of dangerous to, to to be willing to give up your DNA so easily. Well, I, 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 I no, you, you're, I'm, I'm still not seeing the difference because I mean the, that that's the same thing. Oh, we've got your fingerprints. Uh, uh, well, strand of hair has DNA in it, don't? It? 
Yeah, I mean, but apparently, I mean, how do you know? Uh, they're going to take. Uh, they're more than likely they're going to take the mouth swap. That, from my well, understanding, that's, that's, that's how they do it. Yeah, that's yeah, how they're going to do it. Yeah, that's the best way for them for them to collect it. And like I said, there there's a part of me that says, "Wait a minute, you know, I got that little alarm going off. I'm like, whoa, warning, danger. This isn't right." But I'm trying to justify it. Uh, you know, I'm not. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just trying to. Again, differentiate that. Oh, if I if and, I'm and playing, yeah, if I'm playing devil's advocate, it's great for them because now they have a solid rock, you know, solid uh, way to identify you. There's no, you know, not looking really. at. I mean, so you were there and you spit. That's no different than you were there and you left your thumbprint. That doesn't mean you did it. I no, mean, not, yeah, again. don't mean I drive your hairbrush there at the scene of the crime neither, you know. No, I'm just saying as far as an identifier, like GQ's saying. It's yeah, a, it, it's again, an we're, we're just I, dealing with identifiers. The same thing. I could be wrongfully accused and my fingerprints be at the crime scene. That can happen. I mean, I just, right. I, that's why I'm, I'm trying to see. Here's the difference, okay? It's just yet another or it's yet a, an additional identifier. It, in my mind, it's easier to it, it would be harder to get to prove that you had fingerprints than it would be. Let's say everybody. Let's say they had a record of everybody's DNA in the world already. Okay, it would be easier for them to claim they have DNA evidence than fingerprint evidence because it's so ambiguous. Where really? Where is the proof? What what was it? What was the physical evidence that you have my DNA? What what was it? Well, I mean, they to, they would have to they would have to that would have to be uh, entered as evidence. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I mean, you they would have to have the 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 evidence. It, just like if they say we pulled your fingerprints, where they pulled the fingerprints from in a case is entered in as evidence. Um, I I I don't know. The only thing that that I can see is it is easier to come up with a search capability for DNA than probably what it is on a fingerprint because you can digitally map a DNA a lot easier or I would think a lot easier than you could digitally map and database fingerprints so you could probably come up with a search quicker through DNA than what you could fingerprints that's the only reason I would say that it would it would be different. But again, to me, I, I'm I'm trying to find out where's the danger. Where 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 is my, well, my I could, personal I could, liberties at risk here? I could say what's the difference? Uh, well, what's the danger in the government wanting to put just a simple little, you know, ID thing? What was that microchip? The microchip or whatever people were afraid of for so long. Remember, they thought the government was going to microchip everybody. I don't, I, I, I don't see it equating to that, though. Well, I'm just saying, take it another step. If you keep, if you keep giving and giving and giving of your liberties and your privacy, eventually it will come to that. Eventually, people will say, "Oh, I gave them my DNA. What's the big deal about letting them slide a little?" Well, you, this, this head? isn't where you, you're not giving them anything. You don't, you don't give them your fingerprints when they arrest you. They take it. That's it, right. Right, they should, and they don't have the right to take. I don't think they have the right to take your DNA just because they arrested you. For Do you think they have the right to take your fingerprints? Uh, it depends on what they arrested you for. Okay. I think for maybe you know for, for a speeding ticket or something like that. No. Again, like 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 I said, you know that yeah. those little warning bells go off in my mind. I just have to go through my thoughts and and say, okay, I have to have a logical reason for this concern. You know, it, you know, is I it, I would equate this a couple of weeks ago when they were talking about like the drones. Uh, now I'm talking unarmed drones, and, and and in my mind, what's the difference between an armed drone in the air and a police helicopter? Other than it might be saving me a few bucks in tax money. In tax money. Well, I'll tell you the difference there again is when you take certain administrations or certain peop groups of people who are willing to go above and beyond the use. I mean, look at the Obama administration. They were they were easily capable of targeting oh, yeah. 
I'm conservative not, groups. I'm not, but I'm not, I'm not talking about, and, and at the time we weren't talking about that capacity. I was talking no, about. No, no, I'm just saying if they have it, they have the opportunity to use it. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, well, and I was just so, saying. They'll if, make the opportunity if, to use it. If now, they if, use if, drones, say, I'm just saying if they're using drones the, in the exact same capacity as they were using police search helicopters, then. I'm not saying I don't have a problem or I like it or don't like it. I'm just saying is I don't see the difference. It's, it's just aerial units, one's man, one's not man. One's probably costing less for them to put up well, there. Well, before we had the Internet, um, <laughs> I, you know, things happened a lot slower and people were convicted. You know, people were convicted of wrong. I, I mean, I just can't help but think that in the past, you know, everything is so instant now. You know, we have instant information, instant this, instant that, and it's just like with the DNA testing. You know, it's like now it takes them no time to convict me of something, whether I did it or not. You know what I mean? It's just like everything is instantaneous. Uh, back in the old days, you know, it took them a week just to get a letter across the country, you know, through the Pony Express, <laughs> you know. And I, I don't know why I'm trying to make this point. I don't know what really the exact point I'm trying to make, but... I'm just saying it, it's becoming easier for people to do wrong. The te technology is making it more convenient to do wrong. Well, yeah, and then that's yeah. it's the it's it's with anything. Technology is the genie in the bottle. Once it's out, right. you can't put it back in. That's true. Now, I, honestly, what? I would I would rather see in the military. I'd rather see all of the air force go to drones. You know, I, I don't want I don't want anybody having to get. You know the. the I would. I feel much He's better. Personal, though. Well, if, if my, what I my, to say. my my nephew's getting ready to go into the Navy, you know, I feel much better if he wasn't having to fly a jet if there was a drone flying, <laughs> you know. Then, then I think well, you're, my you're, son's in the Air Force. So, yeah. 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 I mean, wouldn't you feel better if he was just sitting with a little controller? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, but you're talking like Star Wars stuff. No, you I take all the better as for out mother, of it. but it's not Star Wars. The Na the Air Force and the Navy yeah, have already got the drone. I know they, they, know they do, but I was referring yeah, to actual the, the actual TV, game, man, you know? the TV series. Right, it's like a video game. It's like the one of the series of uh, uh, the episodes of Star Wars. These people have been fighting for like thousands of years with drones, and you know, so they took the drones away and was like, y'all work it out. So they took all the horror out of it. Well, I think uh, I think that's where we're headed, so that's one thing you better get used to. Like the DNA swabbing of being, when you're arrested, you might as well get used to drones fighting wars for you because that's what's going to happen. You know? It's all right. I got Google Earth already. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I don't, you know, it's, it's, the, I'm I'm going to be all of the person. It's not the technology; it's how it's used. Um, at the point, or at least what they are going to want to tell you that it's used for, kind of the same way as the drones uh, with the DNA. Again, I, I just I think it's uh, I think it is equal to uh, fingerprinting. It's just it, it allows them to pull up your uh, information quicker. No, I understand, but. Try to think about think about it this way: um, when cars were first being developed, right, and we were riding horses around or whatever, or we were just walking, you know, it might take the law <laughs> four hours to get to your house. Yeah. You know, and you know, then we had cars and fast cars, and now they can get to your house in thirty minutes. So it exponentially. I understand what you're saying, but I'm just saying people have to understand psychologically there's going to be more of an impact that exponentially the technology will get to a point to where it's like in that movie that uh, what's his name did where they uh, they're actually predicting what you're going to do. Is that Minority Report? <laughs> yeah, Minority Report. Yeah, <laughs> you know. Well, you know who who knows? But again, you know, it's the, you you get your good, you got your bad. You know, now you can get someone to a hospital within minutes instead of, you know, it taking days to get them to somewhere where they're going to die on the trip, you know. Uh, you know, you, you take the good and the, with the bad. Yeah. I could see where the, the DNA stuff would be beneficial for, like, 
repeat offenders, rapists, stuff like that. I mean, I'm pretty sure that the, the DNA would wind up serving somebody in a, in a way of justice quite well. Um, but again, like I said, it, it depends on how this technology is used. If they, and this is going way out there, but let's say if they started, if they took those database, or uh, they took that DNA database and said, okay, all these people that have this particular marker in their DNA, uh, they are prone to be violent or homicidal, mm -hmm. and we're just going to go ahead and lock these people with this DNA marker up. Now, when you go to that, when you start going that way, then, that of level. course, that's, that's... Well, yeah, that's who's that's to that. say that, that now the DNA is not going in the national, where's my little quotation marks, the national database, you know. Uh, you know, now, they, now they've now picked out the uh, different markers that, that genetically cause, you know, homosexuality and everything else, and so... You know, now you're going to have your DNA in this national database, and people are going to say, "Well, look what kind of markers this guy's got." You know, I mean, just it's a privacy issue to me. You know, I don't know. Uh, and they can't they can't tell anything about me if they have my fingerprint, except it's just a simple marker of who I am. And at some point in the future, they have to mark they have to compare those markers. Um, but the DNA thing, I think, is. Uh, if it's, uh, I'm going to say, if it's used strictly for individual identification, then uh, I see it no, for, for, uh, no different. Do you, do you seriously really trust your government <laughs> to 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 use the information wisely? I'm sorry, I I, I think uh, government has gotten out of control and it needs to be reined in. I have, I, no, I'm yeah. not going to argue with that. I definitely think they're out of control. Yeah. I just, uh, I, I guess, I have some hope that it. it I believe it can be. I, I believe it can be fixed. I wish there was a way to privatize the database to where maybe a third party was in charge of the database, maybe. You uh, know. Like the IRS? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, I mean, some, some, some non-governmental. It's like the IRS? <laughs> yeah. Uh, not an evil force like the IRS. The Federal Reserve. <laughs> the Federal Reserve can have the database. I'm talking about some place in Switzerland. <laughs> You know, next to the the seed bank, you know the whatever it is, <laughs> the big vault. It's got all the heirloom seeds in it or whatever. <laughs> well, hey Tony, I, are you I need to Christine? jump out of here. I'm sorry, we deteriorated the conversation, <laughs> but uh, well, I, uh, I, I appreciate I, you coming, Christine. I really do. Let me ask her real quick before you leave. Did you have any? Because uh, tomorrow is that. Uh, they're doing the uh, drawing for that big prepping unplug thing. Did you have it, or was you just a sponsor? If you just have a sp any sponsor, okay. Yeah, don't be trying to get her, you know, to pick your name. Or oh, it's a, like it's a, it's a, it's a random thing. Oh. It, it's <laughs> <laughs> it's, it's nice one meeting you. What's your, what is your channel now? Gals and Guns. Okay, okay, I'll check it out. It's a good one. Thanks. Yeah, it, it's nice meeting you, and I'm, I'm glad you got to see my picture. <laughs> oh, yeah. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I'm a computer right, tech without guys. a camera. Thanks, Christine. I hope you'll come <laughs> back again sometime. Oh, I will. <laughs> see you. Yeah, I need to get off my rear end and get me a camera, man. All of mine still does only work with XP. But I haven't done chat in over ten years. Wow, well, it says there was an error in our. Oh, there it is. Never mind. It said there was. I got an error on the YouTube side of there for a second. Here's the Lou says if your DNA is taken as you free, as you free in your person and personal effects. What's that mean? Rephrase that question. If your DNA is taken, are you free in your person as in personal effects? Hmm. Don't know. Lost me on that one, man. Well, well, I guess he's, he's talking about, you know, it'd be maybe the same as taking property. I mean, it's something that belongs to you as part of your body, but... 
you know, the police can already forcefully, they, they can take your blood if, you know, they, if you refuse to take a breathalyzer and they take you in for, uh, they believe you were driving under the influence, they can draw blood. Yeah, I think you can refuse that too, can't you? It's automatic, you're guilty. Hmm. Well, I would so, be against that too. <laughs> the woman pleading the fifth the other day. Because... You uh, should, I would think legally, you could refuse. I believe. I I I don't know. That's something I'm gonna have to do some homework on because. Yeah, I'll have to check that because I I'm not sure they can forcefully. Maybe they can take your. No, you you can refuse it, but when you do, you're guilty. Period. Uh, well, I, that, under that the is, but under you the, can fight that in court. That what you don't want to do. Well, if they arrest yeah. you for suspected DUI, trust me, Tony. I've had two of them. They, you can. Fi I'm just saying, you got. You'll have your day in court. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, and uh, and when you have to sign a waiver saying that I refuse to do this, it is a mission of guilt. Yeah, that's what I say. It seems like sign under anything. the thing. <laughs> under the Fifth I never, Amendment, I never did because I was always guilty. I had two, uh, one where I had a bike wreck, and, and one a uh, not even a year after a friend almost killed us in a car. And I had drank like three beers that day and uh, took the car away from him. And because the blinker did not blink in Gwinnett County, Georgia, I went to jail that night. Officer's discretion. Mm. And his discretion was you're going to jail. Everybody goes to jail in Gwinnett County, Georgia. But uh, after that, uh, they broke me from sucking eggs. That was the last time I ever drunk drove. <laughs> Well, for your own safety, it's not a good idea. <laughs> well, I had drunk, like I said, I drunk about three beers in like six hours or so. I wasn't feeling good that day. And mm. was pretty much sober as a judge. Uh, what I was trying to say was was that uh, if, you, if you had a lawyer, lawyer, he would say, don't, do, don't admit to anything, don't sign anything. And even if they tr they can't convict you until the day of your court appearance, you, you know, you're still pr you're still innocent until proven guilty. So all I was saying is put off the guilt until you get into court and let the judge or jury decide. Usually it's just a judge in that case. Yeah. Uh, for drunk, drunk and driving. Well, that was back in the '80s, also, but uh, they just lowered the the alcohol limit now to like 0.5. I believe, uh, at least it, uh, my fiance told me that the other day. They went from 8 to 5. I heard That's something about they were, I, did, I didn't know that they had actually done that. I thought I heard that they were in, uh, that or, they begin, they were beginning, you know. They may be beginning, up. but they're, they're going to drop it. Uh, Blue says they can get a warrant for uh, t for drawing blood. <clears throat> well, yeah, I imagine so. I know right now they were they were able to get a warrant for DNA. So, well, at least they, that's what they should have to do to take your DNA. That's all I'm saying. Okay. Well, that uh, you know I can understand that. Uh, that's, really, that's really all I'm saying in the beginning was that I think that they should have to have a warrant, which would have to be signed by a judge or what are they called? But the thing about it is, is that they don't. But they don't have to have a warrant for your fingerprints. Well, that's just because we're so used to handing in our fingers over. We just, right? I mean, what would happen? That, 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 that's why I wonder if I, I, I wonder if anyone has successfully refused to be fingerprinted. <laughs> you could just keep smudging them. <laughs> Trust you know. me, I've done that too, and the woman didn't like it. She told me she would put me back in the cell and leave me there until I decided I wanted to get my fingerprints taken. Mm. And she meant it. So that was in DeKalb County, Georgia. <laughs> I've been around. <laughs> I kept smearing the stuff. She'd roll it back out and walk away after she got all of her fingerprints. And I'd go over and put my fingers over it and then stand up against the wall. <laughs> she was going to throw me back in the cell. <laughs> and since this is a family channel, uh, none of that is recommended to youth. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> 
this is what yeah. not to do. Yes, what not to do. Yeah. Not drink and drive. Yeah, I was young. Stupid. Well, yeah, you know, it, it just it 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 touches close to me because uh, I was wrongfully arrested, and um, you know I got fingerprinted, and um, that's that that's the only reason I was thinking of it in that terms because uh, you know I had to uh, I had to go through everything like I, I I you know I was a criminal I had to you know collect evidence to show that I was innocent, go in front of a judge, and the judge, you know, declare me innocent and dropping the charges, you know, but I, to this day, I know that my fingerprints are on record. So why, right, so you were wrongfully arrested, so why would you want to give up your DNA? Well, I don't want to. Like I said, yeah. I'm just, I was just trying to, well, trying to map out the differences. Yeah, those are the kind of things that, and that's kind of my point early on when people start freaking out about the gun laws. You know, Obamacare <laughs> should have been the biggest, should have been really even bigger than the gun legislation. There should have been people running well, Tony, in the streets. It's, well, Tony, know? it's with everything. I mean, we've, yeah. especially well, the past 20 years. But, oh, but, that, but you're doing the same thing everybody else is doing. Obamacare is going to bankrupt. It's going to put people in... They hired 16,000 IRS agents to, to manage uh, people, you know, yeah. to, to monitor people. Uh, there's going to be people going bankrupt, people going to jail, people. It's just going it, to, our company, our country's going to be bankrupted financially. You know, we, we, see, uh, we see all the time, you know, with uh, them, um, like you said, bankrupting us financially. Uh, we see every day our First Amendment rights being attacked, you know, all of our rights and liberties are being attacked, and yeah, it does seem like people get more riled up when, uh, you know, it comes to the second, and uh, my answer to that is, is probably because people feel like after the second is gone, then you definitely are not going to do anything about any of the others. Well, I just you're not going to be you're not going to be able to fight for anything. I hope people, <laughs> I hope people have woken up to the fact that they have to they have to vote first of all, and they can't you know. I can't say they can't vote for, but because they can, but they have to realize. I hope they've gotten a taste of what they get when they don't when they just vote for someone because they didn't want to vote for this guy. They voted for that guy. They didn't vote for because of principle. Because they didn't vote for Romney, is that what you're saying, basically? Well, I'm Cause just we saying... Because we might have voted third party? No, I'm saying a lot of people voted for Obama. Okay. Uh, that's, uh, I mean, well, he, he had 62 million votes or whatever, so a lot of people voted for him. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yeah, so... But didn't the Electoral College elect Obama? Or... Yeah, they still had they still had to get the the votes were the uh, initial indicator of who was going to the electoral college generally follows the the vote the electoral college doesn't have to follow the proper the popular vote right no but the the, the electoral college those people are elected to go because of the, the popularity of the candidate in their particular area mm -hmm. so I hear that a lot and I think it's I don't know. Well, we have all, all but two states have a winner take all. That's why it's very popular. It is it's very possible for someone to win the popular vote. It's happened quite a few times before where one candidate gets the more of the popular vote, but yet the, the electoral vote still elects the other guy's president. Uh, it's just the way that the states, and that, that's a state constitution issue. Uh, that's something that could easily change. That's something I would like to see more states do is you know, divide up those electoral votes uh, based on the amount of what each candidate got uh, instead of like a winner take all. So if you got 10, if one state gets 10 electoral votes and one guy got 40% and when the other guy got 60% of the votes, well then it would be split up. You get four electoral votes for one guy and six for the other. I'd like to see that because that would better reflect uh, what the country wants and it would also help us get off the two-party system. Yeah, and those, those delegates can still, 
the, the thing about it is that would have to be something written in stone because delegates can still vote for, they still have the vote. They could still be bought. <laughs> yeah, so, but, I don't know if we don't get uh, if we're, let's just put it this way uh, if, if we don't get more if we don't get more liberals out of office in two you know in the midterms uh, we're gonna we're gonna be seeing some a bunch well, of crap after it's, that yeah it's, it's look it's it's not our problem isn't in Washington our problem is at home. Uh, you know, it doesn't matter. We're going to be putting the same type of people up there. I know this is be upsetting, Tony, but I, I seriously don't believe we'd be in a much better situation with Romney in office than what we. Oh, right I now. know oh, we would. That's that's absolutely false. Uh, uh, I, 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 we, we wouldn't. We would. We wouldn't have spent any time. All of the wasted time. Uh, you wouldn't have. You wouldn't have conservative groups, Tea Party groups, being targeted by the IRS. You you wouldn't have had um, the, the Benghazi mess. You really think Romney wouldn't have sent people to help people in Benghazi? That's BS. Okay, I'm gonna uh, call I, BS I, on I, that I, one. I don't uh, think there's it, a it, lot it, of things. There's a lot of things that would be the, the the story might read a little different, but I don't think we'd be in a in in a general. You had you had uh, situation. People, I don't think we would be the you, same. You had them making decisions based on politics about Benghazi. They they purposely did not send help because they didn't want to admit that Al Qaeda was involved. Okay, this, this has been proven. All of this stuff has been proven, and the people that could have been sent to help them were, were told to stand down. That would not have happened if Romney. And it's possible, office. but other things may have because I know Romney's character. I know his history, and it is no better. Romney's history was no better as far as supporting our Constitution, supporting our liberties. His was no better than Obama's. And I truly believe that. And I've, I'm going by his history, not what I think of him. I'm going by his, by his voting history and his actions. I, I just. I Is he a Muslim, too? I vehemently disagree. I, I no, totally was he a Mormon? No, is he a Muslim also? <laughs> no, I think he's a Mormon. Oh, okay. Uh, <laughs> Every pick any category and it would have been different. Any ca we wouldn't have Obamacare right now, okay? Which is going to bankrupt our country. You're, you're going to tell me we would have he Obamacare? Was, he was one of the original authors of Obamacare. It, 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 that's where they got Obamacare was from Romney. No, that was a state run. It's just like Ten Care. We have a we have a similar system in Tennessee. That doesn't mean our guys would have voted for Obamacare. And he was he was he he had a worse NRA rating than Obama when it came to gun legislation. But this is this is what I'm talking about. This is the attitude <laughs> that got us where we are now. No, it's not because I didn't. Well, first of all. Here in Tennessee, I could have voted for Bozo the Clown. It wouldn't have made a difference. I could vote for whoever I want. And I could have voted for an amoeba. It doesn't matter if the state was going to go to Romney. So, yes, I voted third party, and I make no, I make, uh, no apologies for that because I believe that we've got to vote the way we believe. But... Uh, no, when I looked at when I looked at Romney, I saw no difference. I I, I feel, I'm not, I'm not going to go that far. But it's I'm just amazing. I, I find that amazing that that I can pick any issue and I can tell you, I can promise you, with a thousand percent of my heart that it would have been going the opposite way. All of the well, current, all of the current we're scandals. We're going to have to disagree on that one. I'm not saying all, we, all we, of we, the we current have scandals difference. would be totally different. There would be there would be nobody. You wouldn't have Eric Holder in freaking office, we've, okay? But we, we've we got wouldn't this. Have had, we wouldn't have had gun walking, okay? We wouldn't have fast. We had periods. gun walking before. D T you Tony, think, you, you, you think you, Eric Holder you, would be the depart head of the Department of Justice right now? Well, no, of course not. It would be okay. some other idiot. You think these idiots would be in charge of the IRS? They're in charge of the IRS? No. Everything would be different. Gee, when I everything see, would be different. It would, we... We are been going down. We've been going off the cliff. Let's just go back to Bush. Those are generic answers, but I'm telling you, every no. I'm just saying, go back, go back to Bush. Go back to Bush. That's one of the things that people that 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 that. If my thing is, is that if you 
loved Bush, you need to be crazy about Obama because Obama has been Bush on steroids. I, I, haven't even, I haven't even brought up the issue of Bush. I'm saying if well, Romney had saying, won, it would be totally different. It would be what different. I'm saying is, is that I believe you're mistakenly think that there's a difference between these people, and I'm telling you that they're not. They're bought and paid for. I'm saying the, as an administration, things would be totally different because Romney is one person. He would have he would have had court uh, appointments. He would have had all of the, everybody in the administration right now that's screwing up would be different. There it was be, a Bush there appointee were, that is the. It was a Bush federal court appointee is the reason why. Are Obama we talking about was, Bush or are we talking about Romney? I'm telling no. We're talking about two sides of a coin. That I'm saying there's not a difference is what I'm telling you. That's it's false. It's it's false. Everything would be different. Everything. Every, different, it, different every, is not better. De every department, oh, every disagree. department, every department in the federal government would, would be different. Different is not better. Yes, in this case, it would. There's, okay. there's not much that could be worse than Obama. I'm just telling. <laughs> you, unless you went to totalitarianism. Well, I, I well, no, I, I, I won't we just because I'm going to tell you. I used to think there wouldn't be anything worse than Bush until Obama kicked in. But it was my, my biggest problems with Bush is that, I mean, with Obama is that he has just accelerated the things I had a problem with with, with Bush. And then again, that's with all of our liberties. Just not, I don't look at just the Second Amendment, I look at everything. I just think that's a, I just think that's a popular, I'm sorry, that's like pop culture right now to say that there's no difference. And that's all I heard during the election cycle. Well, when I, when I, I paid attention to every candidate. Very, very carefully, and when I looked at oh, when I looked at Romney, I looked at a man that stood for nothing. I looked at a man who changed his mind on whatever suited his election needs at the time, including abortion. And Obama didn't gun, do that. They all they they all did it. That's what I'm saying. I'm not I'm not saying he was worse or any better. I'm just saying he was unworthy. And Obama I said his administration was going to be the most transparent administration in history. I am that was not. A crock of crap. I do not mistake. Do not make the mistake of <laughs> I'm thinking that I am defending Obama in any way. I am not. When it comes across that way a little bit, and I think well, people, I think people not. do. I think they are. When you say there's no difference, there in my mind, there's an automatic defense of Obama. Well, what I'm saying is, is that there uh, are many types. That there, there are not many types. They are all the same type. I, With I very few, very very few exceptions, we got some good guys out there, but Obama very, and Romney ain't in, 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 in that list. Like I said, Romney is one person. If he he would have been responsible for signing all of the departments of the federal government, I'm saying as a whole, the administration would be at least a hundred percent different. <laughs> I mean. Every department, name one, the Department of Justice, the, the Department of Homeland Security, all of them would be different. Well, they would all be I, different. I, I, would, I don't think Homeland Security would be di any different. I don't believe the problems with the IRS would be any different. I don't believe the difference that we have with the Federal Reserve would definitely not be any I think if you different. had a concern, Romney would be under so much pressure to vote conservative, conservatively on issues if you, since you have people like, uh, well, let, let me throw this I, one out. You have Ted Cruz, you have Marco Rubio, uh, you have all of these conservative, you know, Tea Party guys in the Senate. He would have been under so much pressure to vote conservatively. He he would have been forced to. You, he wouldn't have been able to vote like Obama as a Republican. Okay, it just wouldn't happen. Mm -hmm. I and don't thankful, know. Thankfully, we didn't need the president to beat down gun legislation. Well, thankfully, that's we that's people. one, and I, I'm gonna, I'm you're gonna, you're gonna hate me for this one, but this, I'm just, this one's a little bit me playing devil's advocate here. But if Romney was president during these same tragedies, and these same people who were taking advantage of these tragedies to push their gun legislation, there could have been, let's say, it was Romney. Instead of Obama, it could have ended differently. If we could, we could have got, we could have actually received gun legislation because he would have been able to sway the Senate to to That's vote Maloney. for. That's <laughs> He ran. He ran a hundred percent against it, against uh, 
against any kind of gun legislation. Oh, you know, hey, you, 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 we will never convince me of any stance I, that I, Romney I've has ever had. Did, I've done enough research on this to where I've actually collected enough videos because I had all these people saying this to me for the past two years. The man has reversed. He 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 has not stood he, solid on anything in his life. But he's no. reversed every, every everything from welfare, gun control, again abortion, all the uh, gay rights, all this stuff. He has reversed his decision at least twice in his political career. So that's you, right. So, but no, but he can, reversed it for in the uh, for the good. And I, I honestly believe that he would be a hundred percent different than well. Obama. Yeah. Uh, listen, if they're the same, I'd rather have Romney. Okay, that's all I'm saying. If you're if if what you're saying is true, which it's not, I don't believe, then I would rather have. I would take my chances with Romney. And my belief is that things would be different, but I don't necessarily agree that they would be better. And some things, the big things, like I said, like the Federal Reserve, things like that. That wouldn't have been touched by any of them. No, because that's uh, some sort of mystical higher power <laughs> running the Federal Reserve. Uh, and besides, it's a private institution. It's not a federal, it's not a government institution. So there's really not much that uh, you're going to see done about the Federal Reserve. Well, Thomas Jefferson anyway. was able to get rid of the bank. We might be able to get somebody in here in the future that could. Oh, why well, just left without him saying bye? He I'm might gonna... have. We might have run him off. <laughs> oh well. I'm sorry if we run you off. Yeah, I mean, <clears throat> what's a good discussion if you can't get in a debate every now and then? Well, it's not going to affect our friendship. I just think that, um, you know, it. I, I I just I hear that a lot, and it, and I'm really not responding to you. I'm responding to all the people that like the Occupy types that told me this stuff, you know, and I know they're a bunch of communists. <laughs> no, my, they, my thing is, they, is that... Their whole thing was propaganda. Their whole thing was to tell people that there's no difference, so people would just go ahead and vote for them. And apparently it worked. Yeah, my, my, my biggest, my, my frustration is, is, where, is that I know that there are good men out there who just don't get a chance. Right, and and I'm not saying that Romney was the best uh, candidate. I'm just saying he wasn't my la he wasn't my last choice. I'll tell I'll tell you that much. There was there were definitely people that I thought that were worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I just uh, when you when you think about, uh, I think it's easy it's easy for us to say what would have happened when when he didn't have a chance to do anything. He, he didn't get a chance. Uh, to prove himself, I think if he would have been given a chance, that he he would have been more conservative than uh, than what he had been in the past. Uh, because I think he had something to prove. I think he had to prove that. Well, I, don't think my, my, I guess my fear is is that any most of these that call themselves conservative, I don't see them really being conservative. No, I I when I say when I say conservative, I just mean more conservative than in the past. We don't really have that many conservatives in the in the in government now. Well, you have a few. You got Mark Rubio and Ted Cruz and Rand Paul, those kinds of people. Yeah. But most most Republicans now are basically moderates. Um, yeah. Well, my it's just that, that it, especially, uh, like I said, with the with the the Bush, uh, it just left such a bad taste, and maybe pay closer attention to these guys, and. Uh, you know, it just, I... Well, I mean, just, why hasn't Obama abolished the uh, Patriot Act? <laughs> well, he's, he's had a chance to do that, hasn't he? No, oh, yeah, of course. That's why I said, you know, people, the, the people that, that, that's what irritates me is when I hear people talk about how great Obama is and how bad Bush was, I'm like, well, you ought to be, what? You know, because he, you know, the, with our, the immigration, the spending, the right. uh, growth of government. I mean, he 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 is a bigger. Like I said, he's a Bush on steroids. Yeah, I mean, he's everything that Bush did that I hated. Obama just does even well, more. Well, and I'm not defending Bush necessarily, but a lot of the debt that he incurred were due to the wars that I felt. I think he felt in his heart, and we needed to take well, on. That's the, the, well, but yeah, but I mean, Obama's expanded on those too. 
Right, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. But I really don't like it when people... Uh, it, it drives me nuts when, when, you know, especially people say that about uh, Romney as far as, you know, oh, he created Obamacare. Well, no, he created a... I mean, look at us in Tennessee. We have TenCare, right? It's basically the same type of system. We're no, we're really no better than they than Massachusetts, um, and it's a safety net. I don't, I don't, I'm not saying I agree with it, but um, it's there for people who need it, you know. But um, I don't know. I just have, I just have a, I have a. When I go through all the different departments of government in my head, I can, I can visualize them all being very different. Very well, different. when I think of all the departments, I think that over time they have become, they, they've all been growing. Their uh, reach has been growing. The money we spend on these departments have been growing. This is throughout all these. Right, but it, man, it, they, these are not just, or these are not just departments that are just, Mechanized. These are actual people in these positions. If you go and you go study the IRS situation, and you go see how far down the line it went, there were there were liberals, there were Tea Party hating liberals all the way down the line that were put in managerial positions. This guy from the this guy from the IRS visited the White House 157 times, and that's what they were talking about. They were strategizing yes. on what. To do. And I have so no these, doubt. These are people that would not have been there if Romney. These are these are liberal operatives that would not have been there if Romney had been there. So I'm not saying Romney would have been a better president. I'm saying the you know government wide. Uh, yeah, we we would have had have, a better. We but my, I guess what I'm saying is we'd have Romney problems, not Obama problems. It would be different things. Yeah, but we can take care of Romney problems with Congress, just like we are now with, with President Obama. He hasn't, um, he hasn't. He hasn't been. There hasn't been any gun legislation or any kind of legislation put in front of him to, to even sign. Everything that he's done has been negative. Has been through his executive orders. So that I, I mean, as far as I know. Yeah, well, so, like I said, it, that that's just even though it's very important. That is just one one thing to look at. You know, I'm more upset about the the growth of government, the growth of these agencies, the spending. Uh, Things like that, like you said, you know, the Obamacare is it's just not the gun issue. It's 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 everything. And as time goes by, no matter who has held office, it's like each the next person, these things are multiplied even more from the previous one. I mean, there there are liberals right now saying that Obamacare needs to be defunded because <laughs> they see how bad it's going to be. And I believe in the next couple of years, it probably will be defunded. I, th I think that's probably what's going. If we if we get enough, if we don't conservatives, go first. That, yeah, if we don't get if we get some conservatives in the midterms elected, I think you'll see it uh, defunded. Well, I'm hoping the only thing that I could possibly think of is that people wake up and the things get so bad that they start to realize. But I think that that might be just some wishful thinking. No, I I think it's already happened. I think even I think I think the best thing that liberals could have done is actually brought up the uh, the gun legislation because if they played their hand a little too early if it, if it had been me I would have waited till after the midterms I think they've made so many people mad now that even moderate uh, even those people who were thinking about voting for some Democrat are probably going to vote for some you know moderate well, they're not done they're, they're, we're going to have at least one more little bout before it's over well, they can try. Oh, well, we'll be up there. We'll be up there in their faces again. That's right. Uh, well, as usual, I appreciate you. Absolutely. Uh, it's always a pleasure, and uh, uh, I, I agree with you more than you think I do. I just think uh, I just know in my heart it just takes more. To, you know, the president only has a certain amount of. Uh, that he can do the damage he can do. <laughs> yeah, well, the problem yeah. is, is that they that our Congress keeps granting him more and more power. Not just Obama, but the 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 uh, the president P 
period, is our yeah. Congress has been over time allowing them to have too much power. Well, I mean, look at the what, what the appointments that he made that were just found unconstitutional. The courts kicked them out that he made the recess appointments that right. when Congress really wasn't in recess. <laughs> so, uh, All right. anyway, thanks a lot, GQ. I appreciate it. Take it easy, everybody. See you. Nice.